WWDC 2012, if you're not a developer, here's all you need to know. Speech is in, optical drives are out, Facebook is up, Google is down. We've got pixels up the wazoo, and the cloud is the new black. Hi, I'm Mikola, with a look at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference. Specifically news from the keynote. Three big topics. New MacBooks, one in particular, and previews of Mac OS X, Mountain Lion, and iOS 6. If you're an Apple fanboy, you've probably watched the keynote at least once. You've had endless opportunities to hear, read, watch the news, summarized, rehashed, analyzed, and interpreted. Endless, endless opportunities. What's left for me to say? Why am I even doing this? I can't help myself. Apple introduced updates to the MacBook line. Speed, processor, and port bumps across the board, except for the one that got bumped off. Bye-bye, 17-inch MacBook Pro. And then, in a masterfully crafted presentation, Phil Schiller showed us the future, feature by drool-worthy feature. A new MacBook Pro thinner than his finger. Have you seen the MacBook Pro with retina display? Well, what if we all started displaying our retinas? What's next after retina display? Fovea display? Look it up. Certainly not Scotoma display. Look that up too. Or ask Zay Frank. He knows most of what there is to know about the human eye. Except the essential benefits of blinking. Did he skip class that day? I worry he was out of class because he had to go to the eye doctor because his eyeballs had dried out because of too much not blinking. Here's what else is in. Dictation is in. Solid state drives are in. Super high resolution is in. Killing old technology is in. Yes, Apple put some markers down on some legacy technologies, piled them into a funeral boat, and sent them drifting toward the falls. Wired Ethernet? Gone. Although, with an adapter, you can still jack in. CDs and DVDs? Gone. Although, with an external drive, you can still use them. Firewire? Gone. Although, with an adapter, you can still use that. Wait a minute. Did they just find a way to not only raise the price of the base unit, but sell me a whole bunch of other add-ons to get back to what they used to bundle in? Oh, these Apple folks are very clever. Seriously, it's gorgeous. Lusterific. Another impressive reminder of how Sir Johnny Ive earned his knighthood. As for Apple's two operating systems, macOS and iOS, there are hundreds of new features and enhancements, all seriously covered elsewhere. Seriously. See what I did there? Apple is using the cloud to generate synergies across iOS and macOS iCloud, their branded version of cloud services, ensures that the stuff you have on your computer, iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, always in sync. Change something here, boom, it changes there. Just happens. We have a lot of that already in the current versions, and in the next versions we'll have even more messages, notifications, documents, and we'll have Facebook baked in. Fifteen years ago, Steve Jobs at WWDC 1997, he spoke about a vision for cloud computing, although he didn't use that term. It was just before the palace coup that piled Gil Emilio into a funeral boat and sent him drifting toward the falls. I, I have a link to that speech. It's astonishing. Watch it. As it turns out, a big part of the job of making Steve's vision real to consumers had absolutely nothing to do with Apple and nothing to do with work documents. It had more to do with getting drunk at parties. It was Facebook that got people to upload career-limiting photos from their lives to share with their friends. What Apple is doing in a very big way is turning all of their computers and mobile products into superb Facebook and Twitter clients. Anything you do, make, see, or touch becomes something you can share with very little friction. What's Apple's social media strategy? At last we know. Ride with the winners. And wherever possible, stick it to Google. Walter Isaacson's bio of Steve Jobs talks vividly about Steve's fury at Google when he heard about the plans for the Android phones. I wonder if we just heard some echoes of that fury play out this week. Dropping Google Maps from the iPhone cuts off a major source of traffic to Google. And Siri itself is a way for Apple to control search and route searches anywhere they want to, not necessarily through Google. Here's what's clear from Apple's announcements. The Mac line and the mobile line are becoming two doorways into the same cloud-centered universe. Sure, you can own a Mac and use an Android phone. You can own a Windows computer and use an iPhone. Many people do. And with cross-platform services like Dropbox and Evernote, it's not really hard to get the two of them to work together. But if you go Apple all the way, you find a lot of that synergy just happens. No foodle-doodling necessary. IS users and Mac users could be mapped to a Venn diagram. Folks who use both are in the overlap. Life is a whole lot cooler in the overlap, and it's going to get even better. And I think that's the plan, and I think it'll make the overlap grow. Next week on Mikola's Take, Internet Radio, it's heating up. Until next time, I'm Mikola. The comments are available for anyone who needs to remind me that Apple products are overpriced and have nothing to recommend them except that they're pretty. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Keep telling yourselves that. I don't mind.